The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmayo at ybcc.edu and I will respond as soon as I can. All right, so today we're going to look at section 8.3. And the first thing I'm going to do is switch screens because we're going to be looking at graphs of functions. So let's open up that screen. And there we go. All right. And let's open up this. All right. So here we have a problem. It says f of negative 2. Hmm. All right. So what we've got here is function notation asking us to complete an ordered pair. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the graph and we're going to find an input or an x value that's negative two. That would be right here. Okay. So what is the corresponding y value to that ordered pair? It is negative four. So f of negative two equals negative four. Okay, that's like saying that the point negative, ah, negative two, seriously, is it going to do this? I checked this earlier and things were working correctly. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can get this to work better. That's to say that the ordered pair negative two, negative four is a point on the graph. I'm going to try that once more. Negative two, negative four. Okay, is a point on the graph. Ah, this thing can be tricky. All right. As I said, I checked it earlier and it was working fine. We'll see what we can do. So basically that point right there, that point right there has the coordinates negative two, negative four. Okay, let's look at part B. It says F of zero. What point on this graph over here has an X value of zero? Well, this point right there. When X is zero, what is Y? It is also zero. So F of zero, also equals zero, okay? So those are basically given x, find y. Now, take a look at part c. It says the value of x for which f of x equals four. Recall that f of x is another name for y. So what they're asking for here is to complete this ordered pair. If I go really slowly, maybe it'll work. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to look at the graph and say, okay, where on this graph is there a y value that's equal to four? That's right here. Well, when y is four, what's the corresponding x value? Two. So for what value of, find the value of x for which f of x is four. And you'd say x equals, I know if I go really slow, this works. Okay. Then it says the value of x for which f of x is negative two. Let's see. So that's down here. And that would be what when x is negative one. So x equals negative one. And that corresponds to the ordered pair negative one comma negative two. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Basically it's the same thing, but we have a different graph. This is the function called s. We're supposed to find s of negative three. So find the corresponding y value when x is negative three. 
x equals negative 3 is right here. What's the corresponding y value? 2. So s of negative 3 equals 2. OK? And then it says find s of 3. So when x is 3, what's y? When x is 3, y is 4. Now, I haven't labeled the scales on this graph. If I don't label them, assume that each square is one unit. So this would be like 5, negative 5. This would be negative 5, positive 5. OK, if it differs from that, I definitely will have labels. OK, now. Part C, the values of x for which s of x equals 0. So where is y equal to 0? y is 0. Oh, we've got three points right here when x is negative 1, when x is positive 1, and when x is 5. So we'd say x equals negative 1, positive 1, and 5. I know. OK. Let's see if I can get that written a little bit nicer. That's supposed to be a five. I know it looks sad. OK, the values of x for which s of x are th is three. Let's see, that would be, what, two and four x equals 2 and x equals 4. OK, here we go. Third example, same idea. g of negative 2. So where is x equal to negative 2? Right there. What's the corresponding y value? Positive 2. So g of negative 2 equals positive 2. Everything just keeps buffering. And then g of 0, when x is 0, y is what? Also 2. OK, because that point would be right there. The value of x for which g of x equals 3. g of x equals 3 right there. So that would be x would be negative 1. So x equals negative 1. And then the values of x for which g of x equals negative 1. g of x equals negative 1 is down here. So that would be at what? Negative 3 and 1. So x equals negative 3 and 1. Uh, try something here. Let's see. x equals negative 3 and 1. I don't know why, but when I use the mouse, it seems to work better, but it's harder to read my scribbling. Oh, well. OK. Quit whining and go on with it. Sorry. Find the domain and range of f. OK, so the domain domain would be the x values. See how lovely that turns out if I scribble it there? Let's see, domain, D-O-M-A-I-N, and range. Try that again, domain and range. Oh, well, this just forces me to go slowly. So the domain would be the x values, and the range would be the y values. Well, if you look at this graph, you'll notice that there are arrows on both ends of it. 
So this thing, as it continues on up, it goes up and it goes over. This thing, as it continues down, it goes down and it goes over as well. So your domain is gonna ultimately be all real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity, your range is also gonna be all real numbers because this thing keeps going up. Uh, let's see here. This thing keeps going up and this thing keeps going down. So your range is also gonna be all real numbers. And writing it in interval notation, it's gonna look like this. Okay. Let's look at another example. Find the domain and range of F. Okay. Just need to slow down. Domain. And range. Okay. So here again, as this goes up, it's also going over. As this goes up, it's also going over. So as this continues and continues, it's gonna be, your domain's gonna cover all real numbers. Your X values is gonna, is gonna be all real numbers. However, your range, your lowest range value is three. And there's nothing, there's no range values down here, but it does go up to infinity. So your range is gonna go from three, Okay, I'm gonna get this. It's gonna go from three to infinity. Keep in mind, you never put a bracket on positive or negative infinity because that means that there's an endpoint and there isn't with negative and positive infinity, but three is included, okay? All right, find the domain and range of F. So here the domain, the X values start at zero. Try once more there. Let's see. Domain. Do. There. The mouse seems to work better. Okay. So the domain starts at zero but it continues on to the right to positive infinity sad looking you know but that's still probably better than <laughs> me using the pen okay what about the range range Okay, the range, it's going down, but its highest value is zero. So it actually goes, it starts down here at negative infinity and goes up to and includes zero, okay? All right, 29. Find f of one. So when x, oh, but look here, the scale is different. On the x-axis, it's each square is one unit. On the y-axis, each square is five units. So you got to be careful. So f of one, when x is one, y is 
what's this value right there? 15, okay? That's supposed to be a 15. I guess I need to just stick with writing it out with the mouse. Okay, f of negative three would be right here. So y is one. Okay. The values of x for which f of x are zero is zero. So now y is zero when? When x is negative four, negative two, and zero. So x equals negative four, negative two, and zero. How about the domain and range of f? Okay, the domain, let's see if I can do this with cursive. Domain, that's pretty sad, and range. Okay, so as this thing goes down, it's also going over. As this thing goes up, it's also going over. So both your domain and range are going to be all real numbers. Okay. Definitely not one of my prouder moments. All right. Yeah, let's see. Here we've kind of got a mixture of the different problems we've had. G of one. So when X is one, Y is two. So that's equal to two. That's really a two. G of negative four, Y is what? Negative five. So negative five. The values of x for which g of x is four. Ah, g of x is four is up here, so x would be negative two and positive two. So x equals negative two and positive two. And then the range, domain and range. Okay, so tell you what, we're just going to call d for domain and r for range. Now, as this goes down, it's going over. As this goes down, it's going over. So it's going to cover all real numbers for your domain. Okay, so from, whoops, negative infinity to positive infinity. But your range, even though it goes down to negative infinity, the highest range value is four. So this is going to be from negative infinity up to Four. All right. Now, here, let me re read the directions for this problem. It says determine whether each graph is the graph of a function. If it is not, find two ordered pairs where more than one value of y corresponds to a single value of x. I want to talk about something called the vertical line test. Okay. Now, if I go through and draw a series of vertical lines, like, let's see, so here, uh, hang on here. That's not what I wanted. Uh, here, that's what I wanted. Okay. Draw a series of vertical lines like that one, and that one, and that one, etc. Oh, that one didn't come out quite vertical, did it? Uh, let's see. That one. If any one of those lines cuts through the graph more than once, for instance, right here, let's go back here and say right here and right here, that means that this is not a function because that's saying that, look, if x is four right here, y is a positive four and y is negative four. So you've got Let's see, four to negative four and four to positive four. You've got those two ordered pairs. 
same x value going to two different y values. Remember, that's like one person having two birthdays. That's not the way a function works. Okay, so if it fails the vertical line test, if we cut through the graph more than once, any vertical line, then it is not a function. So not a function. Okay, lovely spelling there. All right, how about this one? Is this a function? Well, we have to look very carefully here. A solid dot like this means that point's included. When there's an open dot or open circle, that point's not included. So if we draw a vertical line right through here, it only cuts through one point. Same thing here, it only cuts through one point, right? Because that open circle is not a point. So yes, whoops, okay. Uh, yes, oh, there we go. Yes, this is a function. All right, and here's another example. How about this one? Is this a function? Well, no, because here again, even though it's a circle, for instance, right here, when x is three, y is negative two. Yeah. When x is three, y is negative two, and y is negative six. So you've got one input, three goes to negative two, okay, three, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, let's see, three goes to negative two, and three goes to negative six, so, Two different input, or excuse me, the same input goes to two different outputs, not a function. Okay, so thank goodness we're done with that. Anyway, so tonight you're going to look at section 8.3, and it's all about reading graphs. Don't forget, let's see if I'll make one more attempt to write here. We'll see if this, if I have like an ordered pair to, let's say, negative four. That's the same thing as saying f of two, f, ah, okay, f of two equals negative four. Okay. There you have it. All righty. I will be back at 115. If you have any questions. Please don't critique my writing with a mouse. I know it's terrible. Anyway, uh, we'll stop the recording and see.